the Space Needle in Seattle, the ornament on our Christmas key as we get set for men's college basketball between Washington and Boise State. Bob Bender's Huskies have been more naughty than nice so far this season. They need a win tonight over Boise State to get their overall record back to the 500 mark. Sophomore Abe Jackson leads the Broncos into Seattle as Boise State looks for its first ever win over the Huskies in the Emerald City after knocking them off in Boise a year ago. It's Boise State and Washington with Holiday Hoops next on Fox Sports Net. From the Key Arena at Seattle Center, Fox Sports Net brings you NCAA men's basketball. Tonight, a showdown between the Pac-10 and the Big West as the University of Washington Huskies entertain the Boise State Broncos. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seattle. Happy holidays to you. Todd Pickett along with Dave Harshman as we get set for this contest between Washington and Boise State. Dave, the Huskies coming into tonight's game after a loss to nationally ranked and undefeated Oklahoma State. On paper, Boise State appears to be an easier opponent, but you can't overlook this Boise State team. Well, this is one of the few times early this season that the Huskies are not going to be an underdog. It's going to be interesting to see how they react tonight. I think they're going to be a little bigger, a little stronger than the people generally that Boise State has played. They do have a common opponent in Gonzaga. Both teams were defeated by Gonzaga, but you know I think Washington has something to prove. They did play well the other night against Oklahoma State. Can they sustain it tonight and come out with a W? That's the big question. Deion Luton comes into tonight's contest off a 26-point performance against Oklahoma State, but Harsh, he's got to get some help in the scoring column. Well, he really needs some help. You know, Deion's the marked man. He's the guy that they knew from the beginning that he had to get the points, and he's got to get a number of touches. He's recently stepped up, but the other people in the backcourt have been too much inconsistent. And so what they need to do, they got to get they got to get consistency in the backcourt, but they've got to get some consistency up front and show Boise State that they mean business in the paint. Now the Broncos come into tonight's game without Kiwan Woods. He's out with a quadricep injury. Their number two scorer puts a little more pressure on Abe Jackson, who is Boise State's leading scorer. He also had a 26-point performance in a win the other night. Well, the thing about Abe is that he can post you up because he's one of the bigger guys in their team, but he also has the ability to step out and shoot that three-point shot. So that makes him doubly as effective. You know, somewhat like Chris Walcott, not quite as big and physical. And talking about Boise State's defense, take a look at some of these numbers for the Broncos with what they have accomplished, particularly in the first half of games. That's where they have been the most strong defensively. They have led every game so far this season at halftime, held their opponents to a phenomenal 36% shooting percentage, which has gone up in the second half of every game. And you see what they did early against Gonzaga. So this is a team that really likes to jump out in a hurry against its opponents. Well, the thing is, I think every point and it will watch me be proved wrong during the game. But I think every point tonight is going to be a point that you're going to have to do something solid to get a basket. You know, I don't think there's going to be a lot of breakaways. I don't think there's going to be a lot of fast break baskets on this thing. I think it's going to be a tough grind them out, maybe kind of an ugly game. But I'll tell you what, whoever wins the game, whether it's ugly or not, is going to be a lot happier than they are beforehand. It's going to be a hard fought contest. It's one the Huskies have never dropped to the Broncos here in Seattle. They hope that the string will extend from Heckhead to the key. We'll be back with the starting lineups. Boise State in Washington. It comes your way next on Fox Sports Net. And we welcome you back to the Key Arena, getting set for Boise State and Washington. The Broncos coming in five and two. The Huskies four and five. We take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's contest. As we mentioned, the Broncos without Kiwan Woods, a key player. They'll start Williams, the sophomore, and Hordeman in the backcourt. Hordeman, a good outside shooter, averaging better than 11 a game. And across the front, Delvin Armstrong, a key defensive player. Morgan at the center, and Abe Jackson can go low and high, averaging 15 a game. Rod Jensen in his fifth year as the head coach at Boise State, 72 and 49, after serving as an assistant coach for the Broncos for 12 years prior to being named the head man. And the starting lineup for Washington, three in the backcourt, Q Carey, averaging better than 12 a game, along with Johnson and Deion Luton at 15.2 points per game. Two men in the forecourt for Washington. Will Perkins, a junior college transfer. And Chris Walcott gets the start at center, the former walk-on. 
starting for Washington, Bob Bender. He is seventh year as the head coach at Washington, 89 and 89 overall. The 11th year as a coach, he's 149 and 146. The Huskies with a 7-1 margin in the advantage. They have never lost here in Seattle, but last year Boise State defeated Washington at the BSU Pavilion by a 69-61 margin. Yeah, that happened to be the game that uh, Donald Watts got injured and in, uh, Roberta Bergerson just went crazy in the second half and uh, had 30, I think 32, 33 points. The ex-Husky who transferred to Boise State as the Broncos control the tap. Bob Sidoff, Jim Geron, George Arredondo, our officials tonight. Boise State in the blue, orange and white trim. Huskies in their home whites with purple and gold. Offensive foul as Hordeman went down the middle. I'll tell you what, when you go to the basket against the Huskies, you better know where Chris Walcott is because he will give his body up as he did on that play. And Dave Boise State takes pride in drawing charges as well. So we're going to see a couple defensive teams tonight and a couple teams that will try to play man-to-man -man as much as possible. Well, when I said in the outset it may be an ugly game, it's because both teams play so hard and they play physically and they play good, tough defense, so they're going to make each other earn everything they go for. Johnson got a step on Hordeman but couldn't hit. Hordeman able to pull the board down, bring it down the floor. Very deliberate. Both teams running in motion. A lot of times Boise State tries to step their postman high and run out of a 2-3 set and then into the motion. Jackson's first shot attempt. The fall away drops. Nice job of putting the ball on the floor, getting Wolcott a little back on his heels, pulling up for the 15-footer. Luton driving on Armstrong, a nice dish, but the foul on the drive, and the call's going to go against Delvin Armstrong. You know, I was here the other night and watched the Oklahoma State game, and Oklahoma State is very well coached by Eddie Sutton and, and really does a nice job of, of staying within what they do. But the thing that they did is, is that they didn't, they didn't plus it. They've got five senior starters, and their six mans as senior. Intercepted by C.J. Williams on a bad pass. Break for the Broncos. Hordeman. Contact, but no foul, and the ball comes down to Perkins. Nice job by Carey, stepping over in front. And they'll call Carey for the turnover as he tried to go down the lane. But what I was going to say is Oklahoma State really stayed with their stuff, and Washington played very, very well, and then there was a short stretch in the second half, and you kind of felt that at some point it was going to come where Oklahoma State just their athleticism took over. But Washington played very well. Jackson again, a little speed advantage perhaps against Walcott as he plays him outside. A lot of holding there on the screen. Good backside defensive pressure by Washington. Jackson bailing out Hordeman that time. Neither team getting to much of an offensive flow yet. Hordeman's pass kind of skipped wide. Jackson, did he get it away in time? Yes, rebound to Walcott. Well, the Huskies help off the ball so well they threw an over-the-top skip pass, and uh, Jackson had a decent look again, but off the dribble. Johnson left alone. Nice check on the weak side. Morgan coming over to help. He really did a nice job. He extended his arm, did not get body contact whatsoever. Fans here still standing, some of them at the key. Well, they they got the tradition now. Right, we'll sit try down to make for the first... first basket and they may be standing for a while at this rate. Morgan bouncing off of Walcott, can't hit. Air acrobatic rebound by Perkins. Carey down the floor, one against three. Oh, and he's called for the foul. C.J. Williams appeared to have a pretty nice check right there. First call against Williams and quickly, three team fouls against the Broncos. Well, this is a pretty good play as Carey, you just missed the crossover right there. Boy, he got an awful lot of ball and we said they got him with the body, but you know, when you're, when you're a coach and you see one of your players make a play like that, you hate to see a foul called because you feel like good defense should be rewarded. So send Q Carey trying to get the first point of the game for the Huskies and does to the relief of some of the uh, holiday shopping fatigue fans in the crowd. 
very quickly, Scott Frazier Dauphiné, a freshman from Vancouver, BC, wasn't expected to see a lot of playing time, so of course he naturally comes in in the first well, three course. minutes. They always send in those guys that have funny names for the announcers to screw up. Oh, uh, that's all right. That, I got a French one. I can handle that one. <laughs> and by the way, I had my shopping done three weeks ago, so neener, neener. Well, I'm talking about all these fans oh, here okay. who are standing on their feet and we're getting tired. They've been trudging the malls, and then they had to stand for three minutes. They expected to go down early. Good ball pressure out front by Johnson. Frazier Dauphiné skipping there to Williams. Good rotation that time. Armstrong gets free on the baseline. Luton, nice tap and controls. Carey, good look down the floor for Johnson. Carey gets cut off. Luton over Armstrong. Boy, he's got a nice pull up on him there. Well, he's feeling it. The last few games, he's finally gotten back into his rhythm, shooting the ball the way he's capable of shooting. You know, it's interesting to me when you look at both of these teams. Boise has one senior on their ball club, doesn't start him. Washington has three, two of which start. So, you know, both fairly young ball clubs. Morgan bouncing off of Perkins, gets his own follow, checked from behind by Walcott. And we've got two blocks and two fouls. Well, I guess turnabout's fair play because that looked like a pretty good check there by yep. Walcott, but we're clear down here in the end of the floor as we see the re replay right here. And Morgan got away with a little push there, but there's, the, there's the, the, the called foul, and he had all ball, at least on the top. Well, we've got two that looked equally clean. Richard Morgan, another Canadian from Port Coquitlam, B.C. Substitutes both ways for the Huskies. That's Greg Clark coming in to the lineup. And for Boise State, Justin Lyons will check in. The senior Dave was talking about a moment ago. Well, you know, when you come off the bench, the guy averaged nine points and five rebounds per game. You know you've got somebody with experience and can do a lot of things for you. Good pressure there by Frazier Dauphiné. And I'll tell you, Rod Jensen's intense. He's into this game more than his players, yeah. I think. He's well, the up and down. Broncos are like a 1-2-2 two, two, or 3-2 matchup zone. And I'll tell you what, if Luton starts to feel it, that's going to happen an awful lot for the Huskies tonight. Yeah, Boise State will try to match out of it a little bit and see what they can do. Try to confuse Washington, give him some looks, but Luton was not confused at all on that one. He has for the first six. Frazier Dauphiné left alone, puts up a terrible shot, though, as he was pressured by the defense. Clark can't handle the pass, and we go the other way. Armstrong, I thought he double dribbled, and then I thought he moved an extra step and got away with them both. They were little ones. Lions driving on Walcott. Into Morgan, a nice entry pass, and Morgan pops it home. Not great rotation that time defensively by the Huskies, but pretty good ball movement there off the dribble by the Broncos. Pressure from Armstrong that time, and Luton's shot comes up short. The one thing you want to do is that you don't mind good shooters taking good shots, but don't create things that aren't there. Lions well ahead of the pack took his eyes off the ball. We have substitutes both ways. <laughs> More importantly, we have some bad turnovers both ways and a couple early buckets for Dion Luton. All even at six between the Huskies and the Broncos. And they say no two snowflakes are alike. Look at that. Happy holidays to all of you from the Key Arena at Seattle Center just underway. Washington two of five from the floor. Boise State two of seven. As we are all tied early in the first half. Thalo Green with the ball. He's in now for Washington. Jackson guarding him is returned for Boise State. See in the upper left of your screen, Rod Jensen with the best defensive posture of anybody on the floor. He plays as much defense as his five guys out there. Clark under pressure inside. Nice laying attempt there by Perkins. Can't get it. A lot of contact inside, but you still got to finish, and that's something that Will Perkins is still learning to do. A lot of extra steps everywhere. Jackson can't hit that one. Clark the rebound. Luton matched up with Lyons. Carey, Jackson got back on his heels a little bit. Luton couldn't make him pay, though. You know, it appears to me that Washington is the quicker of, in, of the two teams and yet probably not taking advantage of it. I think they'd like to be able to get out and run and get some easy baskets in transition. Near steal by Clark, chased back down by Delvin Armstrong.
Jackson way out from the basket, and this time picked up by Luton. Armstrong batted away by Clark. He read that pass well, two on one. Clark to Luton. Well, that's a, you, you heard Rod Jensen say attack, Al, and that's the one thing that, that Boise's not doing, maybe a little tentative in the half-court offense. Again, the numbers, Boise State now down to 25%. Jackson can't hit from the baseline. Luton gets out ahead of the pack, and he's got back-to-back -back jam. That was a fairly high percentage shot, and we got a little timeout here. 22nd timeout by Boise State. Luton now with eight. We have a timeout on the floor. Luton with a couple more jams, and Dion with eight of Washington's 10 points, including a couple early showstoppers. Huskies by four. Seven minutes gone, Washington leading Boise State by four, 10-6. Deion Luton providing a spark early on, and in fact, it's time for our GM drive of the day. I wish my drives were this smooth and this high performing. Deion Luton jamming that one home. Back-to-back -back dunks, giving the Huskies a four-point lead and our GM drive of the day. Deion able to sit on the bench and admire that one. He scored the last eight points after Carey's two free throws. Drive the day brought to you by your local GM dealer. You know, Easy read there by Clark and another steal. Dave, go ahead. Well, Washington's done a good job of putting pressure on the basketball because Boise State has had some cutters that have been open, but because of the pressure on the ball, hasn't been able to get the ball to him, and hence the steal and the turnover right there. Carey hanging banks that one home. Rod Jensen wants to know why that wasn't traveling. That's a good question. It's a run of six straight now for the Huskies. That's Joe Skipper handling the ball, the freshman from St. Ignatius High in San Francisco. He is in the lineup. Gordeman has also checked back in for BSU, and Williams now getting set to return. So the Broncos shuffling a lot of players through here early. Armstrong mishandles that ball. He'll go back and make the touch, and another turnover on Boise State. Right now, Washington's half-court pressure in the defense. Just playing good, solid containment. Pressure the ball, not letting people beat you on the drive is what's given them the six-point lead. Grant Leap in the lineup for the Huskies. Sophomore from Mount Vernon, replacing Chris Walcott, who takes a breather. Luton also back in for Washington. A double team, and Clark left alone for three. Tap by Lyons, he'll control. Lyons going to try to attack the basket. Nice move there by Justin Lyons. He did a nice hesitation move and then blew with the left hand. A little power slide move there on the baseline. Davey actually finished. Some of the other guys, I think, have hesitated against the Washington defenders on those drives. Zalo Green going strong to the hole. No whistle on the contact. Offensive board. Johnson can't hit. Hauled down that time by Morgan as he was falling down. Fordeman now in transition. He'll pull up against Luton. Good penetration again by Lyons. Kicks to Morgan. Well, right now, the last couple times down the floor, Washington is not doing a good job of taking away the drill penetration, and he's drawn the defense that Broncos are and hitting the open man for the easy one. Dave, isn't that a great way, though, against the overplaying Washington defense well, to create some openings? Well, two things, yeah. On the dribble drive, or a lot of people like to see the pass and the cut, which to me is, is much more efficient because a lot of times when you dribble the ball, everybody has a tendency to stand. We have a foul called against Washington on the floor here. The penetration by Lions as Boise State is rallied within two. Back at the key, Washington leading by two. Bob Bender's team getting ready for the start of Pac-10 play next month. And earlier tonight, we talked to Bob about the keys to success for his team in the Pac-10 Wars this year. When this team takes a great pride defensively and makes uh, good decisions offensively in valuing the ball, uh, we're a pretty good team. Uh, we're a fine line, maybe a lot like uh, a lot of teams in the country, maybe some of the teams in the league. But, but I think that you know, when on the occasions when we have played extremely hard defensively with great discipline, uh, it set our offense up to be more confident. And back in Seattle, the player control foul was called on Thalo Green his first, and Boise State able to get the ball as a result. Williams working in the backcourt now with Skipper. Jackson outside now with Green. 
Boise State being much more patient now the last few times down on the half court. Jackson, tough turnaround on the baseline. Morgan couldn't control, but a whistle on the rebound as Leap went down to the floor. Well, what they do is they look for Jackson. They run motion, and he goes away from the ball. And then he, when, then instead of reversing the ball to him, he slice cuts on a diagonal. And that's where they hit him that time. But what was interesting, and maybe because of the foul, is that, that there were no Huskies in, on the defensive glass. They were fortunate. The foul on Morgan is his first. 14 fouls on BSU. Thalo Green, the entry to Leap. He can't hit, but he's fouled on the rebound. Got to finish. That call is also going to go against Morgan. He very quickly picks up two. And they can ill afford to have him in foul trouble, so he's going to have to come out of the ball game. 10 minutes and 19 seconds to go, and he is not a happy young man, and his coach is not a happy young man. And that'll bring in a young man from France, Michael Gilly, a sophomore from Toulouse. Still learning the game a bit, his coach says. Carey hanging to green. Good defense by Gilly. And the shot short, pulled down by Jackson. Good defense, forced there by Thalo. Williams with a bad pass. BSU's really had some problems with just entry around to the wings so far. Well, Dave. Washington's done a good job of getting up in the pass, getting a hand in the pass, and then knocking those things out of here. But if you're Boise State, what you've got to do is take advantage of overplays and look for some backdoor cuts. Bring Mar your man up to the ball, plant your top foot, go backdoor. Marlon Shelton, who Bob Bender says is going to get some more playing time in at the center spot. Walcott also returns. Lions back in for Boise State. Lions against Johnson. Nice pass for Hordeman, and he pops it home. Luton got beat terribly bad on a weak side cut, kind of a la Princeton. The ball was in the right wing, went to the right wing from the guard position. He just went back side off, off from the left side, was wide open for the pass. Give the Broncos credit. They were down by six. They score six straight, even it back up midway through the half. Johnson with the lean in won't go. Huskies all of a sudden have not been able to finish the last two times down the floor, Todd. Yeah, and you're right, Dave. They've had good shot selection. They've been in a good point. Just could not get it to drop. And again, the Broncos a little slow here setting up and patient on offense. Bordeman, another backdoor entry to Williams, swatted away by Shelton. They'll call him for the foul. Luton was also there. Okay, I've got to watch for that. No, they're going to call Dion with it. Excuse me. Well, and Dion got beat, beat again by Williams on the backside cut where the ball is reversed guard to guard, went to the wing. And here you can't see him, but he's he just made the diagonal cut. Now the thing that cost him the basket, if Williams should have just caught the ball and gone right up because he bounced the ball, hence Shelton could come over and block it. Each time when the guys have been open underneath, Waterman with the layup before, they have waited and tried to get traffic to clear. Clark and Perkins both back in for the Huskies now. Johnson and Shelton will sit down, so a very quick appearance for Marlon Shelton, first time in. Williams gets them both, his first points of the game. And BSU back on top. Playing a little matchup now. Looks like a 1-2-2. Two, two. Pressure the ball. Now the point guard's going to drop back to the high post area. Now pressure on the ball. Now he drops back. They do a good job of matching up to people in areas. They didn't match to Dion Luton well, in time. You got to find one thing in the zone. You got to know where the shooters are and find them. Huskies doing a good job of finding Dion, Dion on the baseline. What I was going to say is when you play any type of zone, I do believe you need to match up. And when you match up, that means you got to find people you can't check air. Lions inside. Gets that one over Carey. I'll tell you what, they're having, doing a nice job of getting the ball inside to people. That's three different people who've gotten the ball in that spot the last three possessions down the floor for Boise State. Jackson with Clark, Carey looking over to the bench. They're going to reset it now. It's an ISO, ISO here for Luton. Hordeman right inside his jersey. Walcott trying to clear out against Lyons. Can't get it to drop. And Lyons will pull it home. Got to give Boise State some credit right here, Dave. They had that scoring run. They also did it right after the emotional lift that Washington got off the Luton jams. Carey with the steal as he got inside Williams and lays it home. Their strength, Sun Q has come in about 
10 to 15 pounds of muscle more than he had last year. He's grown another inch to six foot four. When Boise State picks the ball up, Washington gets in the passing lane. Yeah, their passes up top have not been very crisp so far here in the first half. You're right. There's another one. Luton able to step in front of that. Carey. Back to back buckets. Eight percent to carry. He and Luton have 19 combined. That's all of Washington's points. As much as Washington is overplaying, if CJ Williams would just come down instead of passing the ball, pump fake the ball in the wing, and his and the man coming up would go back door, they'd have a wide open lane. There's the one cut back door. It was a little behind Hordeman. He saves it. Can't get the roll, but an offensive board. The two Boise State players battling one another, Jalee and Jackson. They do draw the foul. Well, and the right. call's going to go against Will Perkins. Right now, even though the ball doesn't go in, Boise State is getting to the offensive glass and getting second shot attempts. Huskies are not. Well, Dave said it was going to be not exactly a pretty game. It's been a seesaw battle so far here in the first half. Washington has regained the lead by three. Defense providing the latest spark for Washington here in the first half, Dave. Well, there's pressure on the ball, but see the flat pass across with nothing on it. Luton steps in smart and he's strong. Protects the ball with the inside hand, uses his left hand there. But watch this play right here. See, Deion Luton steps in and makes a steal, but he does it with the wrong hand. If C.J. Williams would just give a pump fake, his man go back door, they'd have an easy look at it. Nice job there by Sin Q. Carey to pull up for the jump shot. The Broncos can make those passes. Timeout called by Boise State as Jackson got no help. You see the backcourt of Washington providing all 19 of the points. The, the problem is you can make those passes against Southern Utah. You can't against Washington. That's probably the biggest problem. While we step aside for a minute, a reminder, weeknights at 6 o'clock, don't miss football news. You can get all the gridiron news, highlights, and analysis that you can handle. Not only coverage of the NFL, you'll get college, even high school pigskin coverage weeknights at 6 right here on Fox Sports Net, where you can find Fox Sports News nightly at 10 Pacific every night. Well, I was just going to say, Washington's doing a good job of playing containment with pressure on the ball. And if you pick, pick the ball up, they're going to cause problems. What you have to do is, we saw that one sequence where the pass was flat across, you must come to the basketball on an angle, go to the ball, even if you have to take it away from the man. Skipper handling the ball right now. He's back into the Boise State lineup. Last time out, the Huskies making substitutions as well as Hordeman comes up short. Ben Coffey, the freshman, is in for Washington as the ball is turned over along the baseline. Hordeman came in shooting the ball very well from outside. Did not look good in that. He came up short. A little weak in the legs. Yeah, Hordeman's better than 52% from three-point range so far this year. Johnson. Skipper with a great job out front defending the ball with Michael Johnson. Perkins turning. We're going to get Rod to sit down. He keeps blocking us under his own team's bucket. Lions with the board, trying to go coast to coast. Jackson thought he was going to shoot. And Bob Sidow said it went off one of the Huskies' knees. Broncos fortunate on that call. Lions, the step in on Perkins, tried to hang and finish and couldn't get away with it. Walcott pulls it down. Luton steps on Hordeman. Over Jackson can't get it. Luton with great first step quickness, as you know, can really elevate. I like the way Boise State plays help defense, though, Dave. That one's thrown away again as Skipper lets it fly. Luton's going to outrace every one of the ball. Walcott shuffled the feet. Big break there for the Broncos and the quick hook for Skipper after that last pass. C.J. Williams comes back in. Skipper, Skipper did a nice job here on the defensive end, though, in front of us. On his man and going back and helping, getting in Wilk Perkins Road, made him come up short. Copy out. Johnson back in for Washington. Halo Green also getting ready to check back in now as we come down to the five-minute mark in a somewhat low-scoring first half. 
pulled away from the ball. On Carey. Yep. And you know, that's one of the few, that's uh, maybe the first call they made on that. See, what, what Boise's doing really well is when they pass the ball, they make a cut right now to the basket. They don't even influence away. And Washington has, has really been grabbing them an awful lot out there, but that's the first time they've been called. 15 foul on the Huskies. Hordeman, a weak, lazy pass there by Lyons. Hordeman was open, but he threw it with about no zip on it. Johnson for three. Washington just not able to get field goals. They are shooting cold so far tonight. Michaels, Michael Johnson 0 for 5 at this point. Since Hugh Carey has hit his last three attempts, so he's heating up, making up for it. That's another 6-0 Washington run now to take the lead up to 5. As a matter of fact, the young man they call it Q is 4 for 4. He's about the only one who's hitting anything. You see Boise State's turnovers continuing to mount. See, right, four, right then, good job by Boise State by C.J. Williams with the backup, but Armstrong fiddling around with the ball out front. You know, you've got to be ready to deliver the ball when somebody does make the cut. Jackson left alone as everybody followed the other man, but he can't hit either. Lyons stepped on the baseline trying to make the save. Interesting move here, Morgan with two fouls coming back into the ball game. I don't know if I'd do that. I mean, you're down five, you know, unless Washington makes a huge run. I think the, I think the Broncos are going to hang around for the rest of the half and make it a, an interesting ball game. Frazier Dauphiné also back in for Boise State. Carey, a little pick and roll with Walcott. Green can't get the follow, but gets another board. Walcott gets the roll. First player in the court for it to score a bucket tonight. Well, you know one thing, you're going to get effort from Walcott and Green every night out. Carey and Luton are 9 of 12. The rest of the team is 1 for 15. That one coming from Walcott just then. Tough shot by Armstrong. He banks that home. Big basket right there to stop a little bit of the bleeding for Boise State. That call against Morgan, and he's picked up the third just like that. We have a timeout on the floor. Morgan with his third. Chile will have to come back in. The Huskies lead it by five. And happy holidays to all of you from the Key Arena, decked out in our Christmas best. Huskies leading Boise State by a five as we get set to close out this first half of play. For the backcourt, Carey having to chase that one down with a lot of pressure from Williams. Rod Jensen trying to sell a travel on that one. Again, the Broncos up tight with the defense. Williams reaching in there on Carey. Doing a good job keeping the ball on the sideline. Try not to let it come back to the middle. Johnson left alone for three. Can't get that one either. Jackson bobbling it. Boy, Michael having a tough night shooting, but he had a really good look. You know, when you take a good look like that, you don't feel bad. I think he's 1-0 oh for 6. A lot of cold shooters out here so far tonight. Frazier Dauphiné. Got a step on Johnson. Gets the roll and draws the foul. Well, Michael gave him a lane to the basket that time, playing on the side. He didn't take away his left hand. He took the ball, took what was given him. That's what you're supposed to do, golden rule of offensive basketball. Take what the defense gives you right here. Puts the ball on the floor. See, Michael steps to him instead of dropping and taking away that middle. Nobody, come, nobody dropped down from the top to help either. Three-time all-provincial player and all-Canada from Vancouver, and he converts the three-point play. And he's a lefty, so uh, you got to take away his left hand. Johnson working with Luton. A little lob inside for Walcott. Jilly there. That one won't go, but Walcott will go to the line. The call going against Jilly, his first foul. Quick reminder, the Sunday night fights the best of 99 year-end special with junior middleweights Juan Carlos Candelo, 17-1-3 with 14 knockouts, and Michael Lerma, 20-3 with 16 knockouts. They're the headliners Sunday night at 7 Pacific on Fox Sports Net. Chris Walcott, an 80% free throw shooter. Fond memories of 
playing against Boise State. His first start came against the Broncos a couple of years ago. He had a double-double in that game. Ten points, ten boards. Four now for Walcott. Full court pressure from Washington for the first time. Bad pass there, and they capitalize. Luton from Green. Nice job by the Huskies that time. Catching Boise State very unaware off the free throw. But Dave, that was a bad read, a bad pass to throw well, that. Well, it was. But, 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 but you know, when you're not used to it, they, you know, they sprung it on him. Gilly over Green. Thalo yanks that one down. Washington looking to run again. Washington not noted for extending their full court pressure. Luton for three. Green left alone on the boards. Nobody got a body on him, but he can't capitalize. Jackson knocked down at the other end. Now rejoins the contest. Williams, big first step. Jackson finally gets one. He was one for six before then, and he nails that big three. Well, he, he set up. They did a good job that time by Williams of not trying to take the ball all the way and knowing that Jackson's going to be spotted up in the corner. Back to the matchup zone here by Boise State. Kerry resetting him again. Now Jolie had to step out. They had the isolation and turn it over, though. Porterman comes back in along with Lyons for Boise State. Coach Bender not pleased with that. Three points, a three-pointer gets them even, the Broncos, and uh, a two gets them within one. It was under a minute to go in the half. So they keep giving up the dribble right there too, Harsh. You're right. I will be interested to see if they come out the second half and try to do some what I call dribble or clear outs where you take the ball to the wing. Armstrong trying to get clear out, had to dump it off the Lions, who wasn't helping him much. He bangs it off green with 11 on the shot clock. Coming up at halftime, we'll get you caught up on some other scores around the country, bring you highlights and stats from our first half here at Key Arena. Lions trying to find somewhere to go right now. Fakes for Jackson and pulls up. Loot in the board. Huskies will play it for one here to close out the half and take a lead into the locker room at halftime. Well, they'd like to get a basket here. You're probably going to go one four low. Try to get some some, some type of isolation here. Uh, here comes Dion off the baseline and Michael Johnson steps high. Nice look by Michael. Not to shoot that shot. A lot of guys would have shot that ball. He found Chris Walcott down low. That's a big basket for the Huskies. Walcott puts it home to close out the half. A seesaw first half. Both teams with spurts taking the lead, losing it, going back and forth. And as we go to the locker rooms, the Huskies are up by five. We'll have our halftime activities for you from the Key Arena right after this timeout. Washington leading Boise State by five, 29-24, as both teams have returned to the floor for the start of the second half. Take a look at some of the halftime highlights here. Washington getting it done early with some pressure defense and some good transition. Luton ahead of the pack for this one. Well, the thing is, when you when you get turnovers, you've got to convert on the other end. That's what, you know, a team that can get easy baskets, as you see the highlights here, you're going to have success and you're going to win a lot of games. If you've got to grind everything out on the offensive end, you're in trouble. There's the flat pass across we talked about earlier. Nice step in front there by St. Hugh Carey going strong to the basket. And there again, there was, there was no pump fake whatsoever there on C.J. Williams from, from Boise, but nice job there by coming down by the queue and pulling up, and being on balance and knocking the shot down. Carey and Luton combined for the first 19 points of the game for the Huskies, and as you can see, they have 23 of the 29. Walcott, the only other player in the scoring column for Washington in the first half of play. Boise State got things started with a couple of nice early passes into Richard Morgan. They did a nice job of ball movement. Here's dribble penetration right there. Thaler Green has to come up the floor to help, and Morgan off for the bounce pass for the easy one. Here again, weak side cut right there. Got beat again. The Huskies a couple times in the middle of the half got beat on the back door from the weak side cut. Lions Didn't get off. Lions with that basket, you can see balanced scoring for Boise State. 
Morgan with six. Jackson, a very cold two for seven on the first half as he finally nailed that three-pointer late. Lyons with four, Frazier Dauphiné with three, Williams and Hordeman with two points apiece. The numbers, as we said, not real pretty. Boise State, 39% from the floor. Washington, 38% from the floor. Both teams dead-eye from the free throw line, but the turnovers have really killed Boise State in the first half of the contest. The only real glaring statistic, as you just pointed out, is the turnover. If that can be reversed, then Boise State's going to have a chance. I mean, when they play the kind of defense they do, they're always going to have a chance to be in the game. Well, you know that young lady right there. Bus Persons Holiday, Washington women's head coach June Doherty. Her team not in action, so what do you do? Come out and watch the men play. She and husband Mike and the family out in attendance at the key. And, of course, the former women's coach at Boise State before she came to the University of Washington. Rod Jensen, fifth year as a head coach, 12 years as an assistant before that. His team, as we said, coming in 5-2. and two. They split with Northern Arizona. Their other loss to Gonzaga, so... Fairly impressive numbers there coming in as we start the second half of play. Johnson, Carey, Perkins, Walcott, and Luton for Washington. Back door for Luton. Good pressure by Jackson, just enough to force him off that one. It's Jackson along with Williams. Armstrong quickly in the forecourt, blocked away by Perkins. That's nice. the 11th block already this year for Perkins. Nice job by Perkins to get back and recover. Dion thought there should have been a foul. Here's Perkins coming out of the out of the screen, into your screen, excuse me. Williams left all alone after the double team. He dumps for Morgan and Perkins there again. A little unselfish by Williams that time, but it really took Morgan too long to get out. Well, what happened, though, see, Morgan had inside board position. I think Williams should have shot the ball if he had missed, and Morgan would have been there for the easy tap. Hordeman penetrates, contact, offensive foul on Hordeman. Same thing he did to start the game. Chris Wolcott took it again, the second one. Rod Jensen off the bench hollered at him, shoot the jump shot as he went by. Well, you know what? When I work with young people, the thing I tell them, when you beat your, your defender, you must pull up, do a jump stop, and shoot the jump shot. And Hordeman quickly picks up a third for the hold on Johnson. When you try to go at this level all the way to the basket, somebody is going to be there to either take the charge or block your shot. I mean, that's just a given. Young man who transferred to Boise State after a year at Clackamas Community College. Carey inside for Walcott, lost it, got it back, and couldn't get it to roll. That tap's going to go. Perkins. First points of the game for Perkins. Will Perkins, kind of a bit like Mark Sanford, who played for the Huskies a few years ago, and still learning, getting his feet wet, been pretty active this season on the boards. Their leading rebounder. Transfer from Iowa Western Junior College. Again, that slow, soft pass to the wing. Morgan able to trace that one down. Armstrong still looking, bad pass. Oh, they got away with one there, carrying nearly the pick. Hordeman makes him pay with the three. And his first three, his first decent look at a three. Again, as we said, he hits better than 52% from out there, so if he can get untracked, that'll be a big help to the Boise State efforts tonight. Johnson got around Hordeman. Trying to avoid his fourth, and Johnson taps it home. I don't know about you, but I have the, I, I just have a feeling that Washington is in control of this ball game, and yet it's a four to six point ball game back and forth. Well, they don't seem to be yeah, putting it away when they get the opportunity, and Boise State comes up with some strong defense. The Huskies have not made the interior shots. You mentioned that in the first half, Dave. Jackson, he drains another one. I'll tell you what, Boise State does a nice job when they come off their screen to catch the ball with their feet set, jump stop, and go straight up and knock it down. Walcott coming out again. Fordeman has to watch with the reach. Luton tried to play a little pick and roll. Carey got right by Jackson. Nice job. Showed it. Good shot fake. Put the ball down. The one thing that always amazes me when you when you when I watch Chris Walcott play, and this is nothing to take away from Chris, is that everybody here, you and I both know he's left-handed. 
if you do a good job of scouting, you should tell your guys they should know he's left-handed, yet he beats people going left all the time. Carey five for five from the floor, by the way. Williams the other way, followed by Armstrong. Good ball reversal and penetration that time by Williams. Armstrong was there to clean it up. Walcott spinning over Morgan with a soft touch. Morgan has no answer right now. They could go to Walcott all day long. He's going to score or get a good look. Yeah, Morgan doesn't want to pick up his fourth foul. He wants to stay in the game, and so he's going to play little, if any, defense. Yeah, but the problem with that is you can't play that way. So you either, you know, Gary's right. up here ready to get in for him, and, but you can't just be trading baskets if you want to get back in this ball game. Morgan skips it outside for Jackson. Nice pull down by Carey and a break for Washington. Loop, Jackson coming back to fill the lane and gets a hold of the ball. Boise State with numbers the other way. Williams for Hordeman. No basket as Wal Walcott draws another one. I saw it coming all the way along. You get a chance here, we're going to see in the replay right here. Oh, man. Well, I thought it was a little acting job when I first when I first saw this. Plus, see, in college, you don't have to be outside. There, there's no ring. And I thought he was pretty, you know, in the pros, he was underneath. Would have been, would have been not a, no, no call. No call, right, right. But uh, when you're at home, you get those calls. Jilly into the lineup now. Johnson lobbing and an offensive foul on Perkins. All right, we've traded off, right? We did. Although Jackson seemed to have a little bit better position. Second foul on Perkins. Well, the thing that really hurts Boise State more probably than Washington is the fact that they had a, they had a two-on-one break and they were probably going to score to take it back down to four. Well, and you're right, and there's no reason not to pull up a little bit more there even for Williams no. after the dish. Jackson right by Walcott. Good help that time. Carey got pinned underneath, but Williams can't make him pay and then throws it away. Was it touched? Yes. Little contact, so Boise State will maintain possession. Washington has stretched the lead by a point. Four minutes gone in the second half. Huskies up by six. Back at the Key Arena, a young man, a senior from Sammamish High in Bellevue, has made it all the way from walk-on to starter in the Pac-10, the only guy to do it in the conference. He's the fourth leading scorer, second leading rebounder. His coach had these comments about Chris Walcott. Well, I, one, it's, uh, it's a great credit to him uh, for his belief that he could play at this level, uh, to come in and work as hard as he has to improve his role every single year from just proving that he belonged to becoming a starter, to becoming a main man. Um, he's, a, he's a good example, maybe one of those true uh, people that uh, young players could look up to. Lions with the miss, Gilly on the follow was fouled. Good point by Bob there about, about Chris Walcott. The one thing I would say is that, you know, 
he walked on, but he walked on quite a few years ago. So he's been in the system. He's a senior now. He knows what's expected of him. He got a great deal of playing time last year, was a part-time starter. Yep. So, uh, you know, he's a guy that belongs. The foul on Perkins is his third, so he goes to the bench. Thalo Green back in. Jalee's miss there was his first miss at the free throw line this season. Yeah, Thalo with four rebounds in the first half, three on the offensive glass. You know, Boise State are there, 15 rebounds in the first half, only one on the offensive glass. Huskies also spreading the floor. Nice move by Walcott. Green left alone on the baseline. Contact underneath. I think it's Jolie who's going to be called for the contact. It is. Second foul. The one thing about, about uh, the penetration there, Thalo's left open, and there's a reason, because Thalo's not shooting the ball well away from the basket. That's not what he does. He's a slasher. Batted away. Johnson able to get a handle on it. Walcott chases it down. Blocked by Jolie as he went right into him. Walcott knocks him down with the lead arm. Well, not only that, but I thought he had already taken the dribble, so I didn't know if that would have might have been double dribble. Second foul on Chris Walcott, the third team foul on Washington. Well, you can't really see it from that angle, but we had a great angle here, and it was very obvious. Yeah, he really led with the arm. Nice defensive sequence there for Jolie. Seven-foot sophomore, as you said, from France. Jackson behind a screen. No, they're going to call an illegal screen. They had it set, but their man moved. Bob Sidoff telling Rod Jensen, you got to settle down a little bit. It was set up well, but Justin Lyons took a step to try to hold the ground as he had two guys to try to screen away. First foul on Lyons. Five team fouls on the Broncos. We'll get a chance right here. Well, I don't know if he moved or if the defensive man who he was screening moved moved him. It was hard to tell from that angle right there. Of course, and we were, I was blocked, too, because the official on the initial play was right standing right in front of me. And watching it live, it appeared as though Lyons had taken the step that time. There was a lot of contact, but he appeared to be trying to move to screen away both defenders. C-14, Walcott again with the lead arm, but this time they're going to call it the other direction. He shoves big time with that lead arm. Jackson gets the foul, his first. It is the sixth team foul, and Washington will be in the bonus the rest of the way after not getting the bonus in the first half. A lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Carey gets a step on Williams. Fordeman deflected it, but it still goes to Walcott. Boy, Johnson, Michael Johnson was wide open, slashing right down the middle. Johnson trying to turn, gets underneath and can't get the roll. Green taps it, but no control. You know, Thalo Green, I'll tell you why, at, at, at maybe 6'6", six, six, he's such a good offensive rebounder, because he attacks the, the, the glass from afar. He's not a low post rebounder. By that, I mean he's a high post, he's a wing. And that's the easy one, because when the ball is shot, most people's reaction is to turn and watch the ball, and he just goes and tries to get it. Came at that one with a lot of speed and strength, but couldn't control it. And Michael Johnson suffering again tonight, one for nine right now. Lions over Luton. Late whistle. And the foul goes against Dion. That's his second. I think Dion says, where did I get him? He says, you got him on the elbow. I, I kind of thought that way, too, when I first saw it. That'll send Justin Lyons to the line. Bob Bender watching from the other end of the floor. Talk about a guy who's had to battle back. Lyons transferring from Central Arizona Junior College toward the medial collateral ligament in his right knee this time two years ago. Rehab that, and then in the summer, the following summer, tore the ACL in the same knee. So he lost the medial collateral and the interior cruciate as Johnson and Walcott checked out. Nice looking Clark, Clark and Perkins back in. Lions gets one of two. And the Huskies need to get a basket now. They haven't, they've gone three minutes without scoring. 
Not that Boise State has lit the scoreboard up either, though. Yeah, they've only knocked it down by a point. They're playing good defense, the Broncos. Again, and they take great pride in that. 65 is their general magic number. Terry penetrating. You saw Green keeping it alive. Perkins can't hit. Morgan comes down with the board. Bodies down in the lane everywhere. Williams right by Clark turns it into transition for BSU. And again, he doesn't pull up. Third foul on C.J. Williams. If you're going to be the point guard, you've got to make good decisions. And he's telling him right there again, Rod, he's telling him again, here again. See, it's a one-footed takeoff. You can't go do a one-footed takeoff, Todd, unless you are ahead of the pack. The man's right in front of him. you got to jump, stop, pull up. Yeah, I was going to say take off nothing and jump, stop, and go up. You're right. About five feet away, he had a simple jumper. You know, the other night we saw Doug Gottlieb here from Oklahoma State. You know, he's averaging 11 assists a game. He's a... You know, he's a senior, he understands those things. He's not looking to, to make plays for himself, he's looking to make his teammates better. Lions, good poise that time. He doesn't get the roll, but he stops nicely. Jackson, double team, tough ball away, blocked by Perkins. See, now he took the ball to the defense that time. Fourth shot that time by Jackson. Timeout called by Washington. That's their second of the five that they're allotted in the game. They lead Boise State by four, and Bob Bender just going to try to find some offensive answers for his team right now as the Huskies have scored only eight points in the opening seven and a half minutes of this second half. Week after week, Goran Deep with Chris Myers has brought you the inside story behind the scenes, behind closed doors. This week, the best of Goran Deep from 1999, stories of champions to the breaking stories of corruption and cheating. Controversial figures to courageous heroes. Going deep Sunday night at 9 on Fox Sports Net. Deion Luton still looking for his first points in the second half after tallying 13 in the opening 20 minutes. He had 15 against the Broncos a year ago. Second half turnovers all even. Washington, you see the scoring drought better than four minutes. Both teams with four turnovers. Carey almost made it five there. Perkins and a hold. Justin Lyons with the call. That is his second. His coach was hollering at him right before the foul. That's 18 fouls now on Boise State. Perkins doing a good job of spreading out in the post, though. He's not the biggest guy, you know, about 195, 197 pounds. But he does a good, got a big wingspan. Spreads out in there pretty good. This has been his weakness so far this season. 7 of 19 at the line. That's 37%. Well, he just wants the ball come out of his hand. You know, there's some things, and he starts the ball real low. He can be worked with. He can improve. That's the shot, Dr. Dave Harshman. You got that right. Lyons, a little bit of a clear out with his arm. A lot of contact and no whistle. Horteman chases it down. Lyons has, a, has some very... Smart play to his game. Jackson can't hit. Lions reaching over the top. That's his third. They're starting to crank the whistles up a little bit, Harsh. Well, I'm not here to criticize the officials. I guess the one thing that you always wonder about is, is the consistency. That's all you want, both ends of the floor. And I think this has been a pretty consistent game. What, what you what you look for as a coach is don't let it go inside the banging and all that kind of stuff and then call the ticky tack stuff outside. You see Boise State shot 39% in the first half. They pulled to about 27%. The Huskies were 37-5, and they are at 33 in the second half. Perkins gets one of two that time and Lions the board. Grand total of 18 points scored between the two teams so far. Horteman gets the basket and draws a foul. It looked as though he were fouled awfully early on the drive, but he's going to get it and the call. He was. The thing I liked about him is he went strong. Once he got the contact, he went strong. <laughs> Ball was against Luton, his third. <laughs> Green.
Levine. Tough shot. And the ball will belong to Washington as the Broncos take it away from one another. We have a timeout on the floor. A scrappy Boise State team hanging with Washington. The Broncos are within three. Here's a shootout at the OK Corral. Abe Jackson, three for 11 versus Michael Johnson. <laughs> Time three offensive hadn't got an offensive board. And we welcome you back to the Key Arena. Lots of foot traffic around the Seattle Center just days before Christmas. And again, our best wishes to you for a happy holiday season as we come back inside the Key. Carey with two on the shot clock, finally realized it, puts up an air ball. Little confusion that time coming out of the timeout, Harsh. They didn't realize how limited they were on shot time. Well, exactly, and then somebody finally did realize it, and then Sinkyu was a little slow in getting into it. Joe Skiffer, who was not particularly strong in the first half, in running the point again for Boise State officially credited with only one turnover, but but not a bad job on the defensive end. I thought he really did a nice job helping out. Jackson calling for it against Walcott. And Walcott will draw the hold. Third foul on Chris Walcott. Fifteen foul on Washington. I'll tell you what, 10.45 to go a long way around the track, but uh, Huskies can ill afford for, to get Wolcott into foul trouble. Clark lost his balance. And that's a three-pointer. It's Hordeman. I couldn't see again, but that's Hordeman's second three. First time we've been tied since the midway point of the first half when we were even at 12. Luton for three, and he gets his first points of the half answering back in big fashion. Well, did a good job at that time of getting open, coming off of the weak side pick and squaring up and setting his feet. Skiffer into the lane off balance, throws it up and got it to drop. Where did he find that? Nice job for the freshman from San Francisco. <laughs> Biggest roar of the game from this crowd coming up for basketball? No, because they're throwing t-shirts into the crowd. You see what Boise State is doing so far defensively tonight among the nation's leaders in scoring defense as Luton is fouled by Richard Morgan and that is his fourth. Not only is his fourth, but he hits him in on a three-point attempt so he's going to get three shots. There's the nice move right there by Skipper. Did a great job of that. I call that a little slide glide shot. Slid or, gl or glid. You like that word? By the defender. I know you're stunned. No, I was. <laughs> I, I had Rod Jensen in my other ear asking why Luton had three free throws since he hit him after the shot. And Bob Sidoff motioned him back politely to the bench and then said three shots. See Luton now up above his average as he drains the first two. 
Lyons coming out. Delvin Armstrong back in. He's the guy they thought originally would be playing a lot of defense on Luton tonight, but it's been Morgan for a good portion of this second half. Gets them all. 19 now for Dion, and the lead back to four as Johnson comes back in. Huskies trying to set up some defensive pressure now. Bob Bender and staff getting him into position. Jackson almost serving as a third defender, blocked his own teammate off. A whistle in the chase for the ball. Who's it going to go against? Skiffer, I believe, on the hole. They're going to call an intentional foul. What I don't understand is right here on the sideline, Skipper had Armstrong wide open up the sideline in, instead of throwing the basketball. Oh, they call him right there by grabbing the jersey. There's what it was. Boy, that's that's all. But but Skipper. But that's a hard foul to call intentional. That is. But Skipper, if he'd have looked down the floor, they had they being the Broncos had numbers. Skipper, excuse me. Rod Jensen talking with his crew as Carey goes to the line and gets both of those. Rod starting to shake his head at some of these calls as the kind of free throws mount. That's five straight free throws for Washington. I'm kind of surprised that Morgan has not checked out with checked the four fouls. The yes, Bob Bender is going to call for another timeout here. Daily. Washington's third as the five consecutive free throws have hiked this right back to a six-point lead for Washington. A reminder as Bob Bender confers with his team tonight at 10 o'clock Pacific, it's Fox Sports News Prime Time with all the day's scores, highlights, and breaking stories, news from the NBA, NHL, college bowl previews, the latest in college basketball action, that and much more tonight at 10 here on Fox Sports News Prime Time. Rod Jensen, his assistants, Ed Boyce, Yvonne Williams, Mark Folsom, who was at Portland State a year ago, part of Joel Sabatka's staff. They're in the background. Broncos waiting for a Seattle area high school standout to be able to join them next year. Quincy Wilder, originally committed and signed with the Huskies. Walcott called for a travel. And a little bit of uh, noise. What are you doing, playing your tie on the air? Your musical tie went off. Did it? Did it? Yeah. <laughs> Clark deflecting that one out of bounds. I'm sorry. At least it wasn't my musical socks. It's Christmas, man. I'm in the spirit. Morgan working up high against Perkins. I just didn't want anybody to think it was your watch alarm. <laughs> Clark trying to keep that one inbounds. Jackson driving by Walcott into the lane. Draws the block. Call goes against Perkins. That is his fourth. Strong boom by Jackson. Is lucky that he didn't get called for a charge there because Clark was sitting pretty, pretty good defensive stance right here at the end. There's Clark underneath, but they're going to call it on Perkins. You know, Harsh, that's, don't you think that's one of those offensive mentalities? A lot of guys say, well, I'm going to take it strong the hole because I know if I draw contact, Chances are I'm going to the line. Yeah, well, but generally that only happens at, at home. You know, they don't get a lot of calls on the road. That's just life on the road. That's just the way it is. I mean, Jackson now with nine below his 15 point a game average. Luton at the other end, kind of forced that one up, but a good save by Perkins. Johnson running out of space. Threw that one up for grabs and a hold on the floor. I believe going against Walcott. And it is, and that is Walcott's fourth personal foul. And that is a big foul with just under nine minutes to play. I didn't get really finished my thought on Quincy Wilder, the fact that you know he was at USC, went to Highline Community College, played two years, went to USC, never really felt comfortable there. They tried to make a point guard of him. He's not a point guard, he's a scorer. So he's back. Ed Boyce, his high school coach, is, is the assistant here, at, head assistant at, at Boise State, and has been for three or four years. So, you know, Quincy's in a real comfortable situation, I think, now, and I think you'll see him blossom and have a real good senior year. Jackson now into double figures, the former Gatorade High School Player of the Year at Bishop Kelly High School in Boise. 
He had a huge tournament in the Big West Conference Tournament for the Broncos last year. Four for four at the line now for Jackson. Green, the dump off. Carey got fouled behind the stripe by Lyons, and that is his fourth all in this half. You know, see, that's the one thing that you see Rod, he's just, he's just dying because you know the one thing he's told his kids over and over and over is you don't foul the jump shooter, especially guys who are attempting threes. It, it was hard, you know, we're clear across the court, but it looked to me like, that, was that on Lions, did you say? Yes. That he jumped and tried to go, just bother him and go by the basketball. And, and you know, that's not a bad situation, but you certainly cannot foul the jump shooters. Carey steps to the line. He's five for five from the line this evening. Make that six for six. And the last 12 points in this game have now been scored by free throws. 17 for Sen Q Carey. He and Luton combining still for 36 of the 49 points for Washington. Yeah, the Huskies only shooting 35% from the floor right now. Boise not much better at 40. It's because nobody's taken a shot yeah, in ages. They've all been at the free throw <laughs> that's line. That's right. But you're not going to win a lot of games shooting 35%, uh, but those 15-foot free looks from that little white stripe help you. Huskies now gone to a 2-3 zone. Jackson makes that grab. They did this the other night versus uh, Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma State got the ball in the middle of the free throw line. They got a lot of good looks. Jackson one dribble, drains the three. Looks like he's a little more comfortable off that dribble pull-up. Well, I'll tell you what, there aren't many guys that shoot the three off the dribble or any better than that. Jackson batting that one away. His three-pointer takes him to 14 for the night. It also brings the Broncos back to within two. More action for the key after this. As we showed you earlier, Boise State among the nation's best in scoring defense. Rod Jensen addressed that subject before tonight's game. Uh, we are playing pretty good defense right now. Uh, it's, it's not quite as consistent as we would like. Uh, it's still early in the year. I Hopefully, every time we take the floor, it gets a little better. And uh, some night, we're going to play it for 40 minutes. Well, they didn't play it just then. Greg Clark was left alone for a lay-in as we come back live. His first points of the game, and Washington leads it by four. The magic number, really, for Boise State is 65. Under Jensen, the Broncos have won 76% of their games when they've held their opponents to 65 or less. Well, I think most teams are going to win when they hold their opponent into that. To me, defense is about what your, your, your opponent does percentage shooting-wise, and not so much you know, whether you hold them under a certain score, because people can be, you, you can be an up-tempo team and be very good defensively. And, you know, it, Norm Ellenberger used to ask the question, if my team went scores 100, you scored 80, and I beat you by 20, are you, am I a worse defensive coach than if you play slow down ball and you win 70 to 50? It's still a 20 point margin. It's just style of play. It's all the numbers, yep. 32 turnovers, the latest number, 18 for Boise State, 14 for Washington. Horteman was wide open down the lane. They didn't get it to him. Not a lot of good ball handlers in the five count there on Lions. That's, that's one of the things that's hurt the Broncos, I think, tonight. Well, there again, they made some good back to, backdoor cuts or curl cuts also, but there again, Lions out front when he had the ball wasn't able to deliver Hardeman the ball. He's not a passer. Oh. Yeah. Step in by Jackson as he intercepts that pass from Green. Lyons tries to reverse on Perkins. You can just see sometimes guys anticipate contact with that kind of shot. Yeah, well, it was a good idea what he wanted to try to do, but the execution was not well, not well executed. Luton, little shuffle pull up over Morgan. And whistle on that one, no bucket. Thalo Green was the man who got in position and the call goes against C.J. Williams, his fourth personal foul. That's three guys for the Broncos, two for the Huskies with four fouls apiece. Well, you need to get a body on Thalo Green. We talked about that earlier. He's going to go to the glass every time the ball's shot. That's what he does best. 77% free throw shooter. Thalo picks up his first point of the night. 
See, now Fatal looks good shooting the ball right there as you look at all the foul trouble on both teams. But he's 0 for 6 from the floor, and I think a lot of it has to do with shot selection. I don't think he's as bad a shooter as that. Five players with four fouls. Lyons and Williams check back out for Boise State as Green gets both of the free throws. Makes it a six-point contest again. It was a five-point game, 29-24 at halftime in favor of Washington. Jackson, who scored the last seven points for Boise State, battling with Clark. Skiffer, Morgan with a bit of a push from Perkins. Skiffer batted away in the lane. I think Thalo Green's going to be called for a reach-in as he nearly came up with a clean steal. That's his second foul. A lot of bumping and grabbing and holding on the cuts, both ends of the floor. <laughs> Batted around, still loose, saved by Perkins. Yeah, we had a total of 13 fouls in the first half of play. We have better than 20 so far here in the second half. Well, if you're Boise State, you've got to get to the line on the bonus, and you've got to make your free throws. You can't, uh, you can't be trading hoops or not making free throws when Washington is getting to the line more often and making their free throws. Carry the spin off and a little bit of a bump. They're going to call that one on Jackson. That's his second. This is this is getting a little tight for my life. A little harsh. Now they said they, Morgan that it was Jackson with the contact. I think you're right. Yeah, the foul was on Jackson. They called the wrong guy. Well, you know what? We've, it's we've, on we've, got, we've done two games, and you remember the other game we went, we did, and, and they got the, and they called the foul on yep. the wrong yep. player because they had similar numbers and had the wrong free throws and everything else. So. And I'll make it even worse, Harsh. They came down and said that Morgan had fouled out. And Rod Jensen said, what did he do? They said he set an illegal screen. They said, well, we were on defense. <laughs> so Morgan is called for the foul, although it was Jackson on the hold. Clark gets one out of two. And Morgan fouls out of the game with six points all in the first half. Meanwhile, the lead back up to seven. Fordham in the pull up, he draws contact from Luton and will go to the line. Fourth foul on Dion Luton. Dion is, for most of the evening, and not to pick on him, has trailed his man off the screen. If you're not going to get help, you either got to get over, under, or switch the screen. Nice job there. Boise State does a pretty good job on the pick, and, and then if you're trailing at all, they're going to curl you. 11 for Hordeman as he stops a run of four, five straight for Washington. Green, nice backdoor cut on Jilly and pucks it home. Nice pass there by Greg Clark. Too. You know what, Harsh? That's the smartest play we've seen all night. Great move by Green. Well executed. And the passer was ready to deliver the ball, too. Lyons, his back door cut, and he sneaks it in. Seven for Justin Lyons. Well, they've had people open on those back cuts previously, but they haven't been able to get him the ball. You know, this may boil down to who can make a few shots harsh and also who doesn't foul out of the ball game right now. Yeah, if there's five guys standing at the end. Come 
Luton for three over Jackson. Couldn't get around the screen. 22 for Dion Luton. Well, they went to the matchup zone right there. Nobody could get out to the corner. It's at a nice baseline screen, screen for Dion. He was, he was open. Jackson inside for Jalee. Portman for three. Rush that one, Jalee, the board. They're going to call him for pushing away to create the space, and that's a good call. He did lead with the arm. Sadly for Jalee, it's only his third foul. Here's the back door. Nice pump fake right there. Nice setup by Thalo Green. Actually fumbled the ball, but caught it. There's the other one. There's the little baseline screen by Thalo for the three-point look by Dion Luton. Green now makes it the largest lead of the ball game for Washington. And Thalo, although only one for seven from the floor, as we saw that lay in for his only basket, three for three from the free throw line. The Huskies red hot at the free throw line. They made four of four in the first half, so they've cooled a bit here in the second, but they've been there a lot more frequently. Green is four for four. He has six second half points and gives Washington its first double digit lead. Great crowd, huh? The only time they yell is when somebody's throwing t-shirts away. That was good. Yeah, I didn't want to do it again. I figured why flog a dead horse, but yeah. Is that the largest UW lead? Just, just is that the Yeah. I, is just, that, I said, is that the largest UW lead? He's busy yanking his tie. Fine, fine obliques. Fine, fine obliques, huh? Roger. Over. What? What? What's our clearance? Roger, clearance? I thought it was Curtis. What's our vector, Victor? We have clearance, Clarence. Surely you just don't call me Shirley. Yeah, they didn't have it. They had one offensive rebound in the first half for the state. <laughs> Pac-10 basketball on Fox Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Northwest Ford stores, home of the Northwest's number one selling lineup of SUVs. Back at Key Arena where the Huskies enjoy a 10-point lead for the first time tonight and go to full, full court pressure as well. Ordeman losing it, still loose on the floor. And 10 seconds have expired. They give it to him anyway. If there's, a, if there's a, an Achilles heel for Boise State, it's that they don't have a true, real good ball handler, especially in the game right now with Williams out. In, uh, it's Jackson. Susceptible pressure. My for fault. Three. But he does that pretty well. Third three pointer of the night now for Abe Jackson. He's up to 17. Well, that can get you back in the game pretty quickly. Yeah, but they'll have to make some stops down here. Luton matched up with Lyons. Steps right around him. And a foul. A very late whistle. Silly foul, though, by Justin Lyons. His man already well by him. He will foul out of the ball game. The nice second job. Boise State player to do so. Excuse me. Nice job by Dion to curl the play on the dribble and put the little floater in the lane. Lyons with a tough performance. He will go out with seven. C.J. Williams will check back in for Lions. Uh, 
Luton looking to complete the three-point play. They got the first 19. They haven't cooled off much since. 25 for Luton now, 26 on Tuesday. He's had a big week. Shooting so much better, and I think they're, what, uh, 11 for 11 from the free throw line as a pair. Big height differential there with Williams at six foot going up against Luke. Green trying to step in. He battled Armstrong. Yeah, little careless bounce pass with nothing on it from the point from the guard to the wing position has really hurt Boise State tonight. Trying to run some picks here just to rub guys off, and Washington steps through very well. Jackson with the flare. Perkins pushing through the screen that time, draws the call. That'll be his fifth. Well, Green is starting. I think he's going to come back with Walcott. I was going to say, I'm sitting here watching this play, and you know, Washington's really extended the lead with Chris Walcott on the bench. Now, that's nothing to take away from, from Chris. It's kind of, kind of, uh, I think. It, you need to be encouraged if you're Bob Benner because he's been a heart and soul of your ball club this early in the season. Perkins hitting the boards well, and the junior from Omaha will have to take a seat, although he will wait until he's dragged out of the ball game. He tried to sneak through, but he knew it. And Walcott will come back in. Williams to shoot two as both teams are in the double bonus now. Bob Bender up, shouting words of encouragement to his team. Missed them both. Walcott tripping with Armstrong. The Broncos get it back. Jackson for three. Nails another one. 20 for Abe Jackson. He gets half an opening, Harsh. He's dead. Well, I'll tell you what, you better get a hand in his face early. Green, nice move that time. Elected to dish it back smart, out. Smart play, though, by Chris Walcott right there. You know, your time and score right now, that's what you're playing. And if they hadn't have rotated down the Broncos, he could have gone ahead and shot it, but he saw the defense coming. Walcott looked to shuffle the feet again there. Luton for three. Shoot Luton, 28. That'll get you healthy very quickly. Portman tries to answer. Well, he was out there three point. <laughs> three and a half high. NBA. Yeah, three. Season high 28 for Luton. Coming off the 26 from Tuesday. Wonder who the nominee for player of the week will be from the Washington camp. Jackson trying to keep Boise close. Hit his last three three point attempts. Reach in. Hordeman and Jackson both there. And the call goes against Clint Hordeman, his fourth. Scott Frazier Dauphiné will check back in for BSU in just a minute. Send Q Carey waiting to go to the stripe. Whereas Dave mentioned, he has been perfect tonight. Hey, you just jinxed him, you know that. It's the Fox Whammy. It's our way. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> no. But you mentioned it first, so. <laughs> Frazier Dauphiné in. Delvin Armstrong out. 17 for the Q. <laughs> and a timeout on the floor. Washington leading it by 11 in the Closing 90 seconds of play as Bob Bender looks to get his team back to five and five before heading down to the state of New Mexico to meet both of the programs in that state. Yeah, I don't think we got an update or a final on that on that score. What was it? It was a seven point yeah. <coughs> New Mexico State lead at the time in the second half. And before we return to action, time for our play of the game. That's our Magnolia moment brought to you by the good friends at Magnolia. See, it's really tough to help off on the shooter. 
you can't, you know, let let Chris Wolcott take the ball to the basket. You may step at him, but you got to step and stay. If you take more than a half step towards him, you open up Luton. He's the shooter. That three by Dion making it a 10-point lead at that point. Our Magnolia moment brought to you by Magnolia High Five. Broncos in sprint situation here. Williams hanging, nice arch, couldn't get the drop. Frazier Dauphine back black from behind by Green. Tim Hayes, a redshirt freshman from La Grande, Oregon, will check in for Boise State here in the closing moments, replacing Joe Skipper as you get a look at another Oregonian, Thalo Green from South Salem with that last block. Lazy pass by Jackson, Clark with the intercept. Five for Greg Clark. Great job by Clark, he's done a nice job defensively tonight, but did a really nice job to protect the ball and glide to the hole. Ah! Offensive foul on C.J. Williams and he will foul out. Well that's, uh, of his five fouls, three of them were offensive charges that I can remember and they were all taken by Chris Walcott. You got to know where Walcott is at all times when you put the ball on the floor. Here he goes, right there, he beat his man again. CQ says, I don't worry about it because I know that Wally's going to be there to bail me out. We're going to call Rick Neuheisel up, see if Walcott can play free safety. That's what he's been doing tonight. Williams, a long night. We'll take a seat. Luton for 30. Bad somebody else has called Neon Neon because he's put it up in the lights tonight. He has. I'm trying to remember what his uh, what his career high is. It's 30. It Season is. high, I mean. No. Yeah. Here you see our player of the game brought to you by today's manufactured home, Dion Luton, with a season high 30 point performance. Green will pull that rebound down. Huskies content to run out some clock time now. And that is a career high for Dion Luton, the first 30 point performance of his career. Wolcott will let her fly. It was a battle. They were dead even midway through the second half, but Washington able to pull away and pick up its seventh win in eight all-time matchups against Boise State. Dion Luton with a 30-point performance, a career high, as he and Senq Carey combined for two-thirds of the Huskies' points in that contest. 72-57 in favor of Washington, as they defeat a gritty Boise State team, which drops to five and three for the season. We'll be back to Key Arena to wrap things up after this timeout on Fox Sportsnet. <laughs> 